He might be the game's most expensive defender, but it's time to buy Trent Alexander-Arnold. Welcome to the Gianni Baticci YouTube show. Hope you guys are well and you're looking forward to game week 15. It was cool to have game week 14 as a midweek round of Premier League fixtures, wasn't it? The points are flowing, the fixtures are coming thick and fast, the festive season is fun and we're absolutely here for it. Well, a game week deadline again tomorrow and Trent Alexander-Arnold is back on the menu. In today's show, we're also going to look at captaincy debate uh, for me, benching dilemmas for me. We're going to talk about some key players as well that will be affecting both mine and your teams as well as looking ahead to the fixtures. If you're enjoying the show so far, do show support. It massively helps the algorithm if you comment, if you like, and if you subscribe. If you could do one or two or three of those things, that'd be amazing. I will be replying to all comments in this video as well. So look, let's get started with, I think man of the moment, and that is Trent Alexander-Arnold. And that's because Trent, Trent hasn't been performing to his expected data this season. Not quite. But we saw in the week, he came off the bench, he got two assists straight away. I think he got an assist within 100 seconds and a yellow card within 140 seconds. Um, but he's back. We saw against Man City in game week 13, proper involved, unlucky not to score. I think he hit the post. In 14, action, and he had the rest. He's now back fit. He's not got to worry about a resting or a benching now. And he's getting into those advanced positions. And when we look at the expected goal involvement of all defenders in the game, despite having a bit of an off-season and missing some games injured, he is still top of the charts. His expected goal involvement is 3.96. He's actually got three from that. So a little bit of underperformance there. Leif Davis second, Guardiol third, Daniel Munoz and Luca Dean complete in the top five. Guys, they are defenders I really, really like. Like... Of course, we we know with Leif Davis, we're not going to get too many clean sheets. Probably not but go in there. Haven't really looked at him. But Gavardio and Manoz in particular, those two, I think they're going to start keeping cleans again, guys. We saw Man City keep a clean against Forrest. Daniel Manoz is so attacking. Like, Palace are one of the few teams to always play with a back three. So Manoz is effectively a winger. Um, he's looking really good and we know his goal threat. He's had a couple of price drops as well this season. But look, Trent is the man of the moment and how we fit him in our teams is the big question. Of course, he ain't cheap. And then we have to mention a couple of defenders not in this chart. Like, Durian Timber might not come with the same goal threat, although he had a goal in the week, but you're going to get loads of clean sheets from Arsenal. He's a cheap route to that Arsenal back line. And then I think of Joe Gomez and just look at Canate. I tweeted in the week about Canate. Um... There's a good chance Gomez gets a great run of games and a load of games. Mid-January is when Canate is expected back. The slight issue I've got was <clears throat> in the week against Newcastle, Joe Gomez came off and Kwanzaa moved to centre-back. And I was like, oh, is Slot convinced that Gomez is going to be the Canate replacement or is Kwanzaa going to get his opportunity? So it feels a week too early to commit to a Joe Gomez, despite him being amazing value and it being a perfectly good entry point. If he starts this weekend and Liverpool look good, then he might be a potential buy for me. But until I know he's absolutely got the nod over Kwanzaa, I don't think I'm ready to go there. So look, Trent, Timber, all the guys in this list and Joe Gomez, there's plenty of interest in defenders right now. And when we look at that, that ticker from Fantasy Football Scout, we can see the teams right at the top. And when we look at the ticker, we go, okay, who's going to get clean sheets? Well, straight away, I look at it and go, Arsenal, you're going to get loads of clean sheets. Fulham, Everton, Palace, Ipswich, Brentford. I've just got my app up on my phone, guys. Bournemouth are high, so are Brighton. But Man City, too, will start keeping cleans, surely. Liverpool, sort of top third, they have been the best defence this season. Everton, Fulham, Tottenham, Leicester and West Ham. I still see two or three clean sheets in the next five for Liverpool. So I absolutely think we can go there. So we'll get to my team in a second. But first, we have to talk about one football guys. I'm so excited that they sponsor this YouTube channel. Like there is a link in the description. There is a QR code on screen. Get downloading. It's free. It should live on the home screen of your phone. I'm on one football day and night. If you want team news, one football. If you want live scores, one football. If you want the stats and the data, it's brilliant for that. The video clips, 60 second clips of all the goals. Yes, please. One football lives on my home screen. I use it all the time. It's great for the other leagues. Like if you want Champions League news, one football. So guys, get downloading. It's free. You'll love it if you don't already use it. It's the best football app, in my opinion, 
out there. So look, let's have a look at my team. People always say to me, why do you call it your bus team, Janny? Bus team's a bit of an expression in the FPL community about like, oh, if you get run over by a bus, at least your, your captain's in place and your benching's in the right order. So this is my team before transfers, okay? And at the moment, I look fairly well set this week. My big decisions, I guess, over are like benching headaches, um, but we'll get to them in a second. So I've got Fabianski in goal, back three of Gabriel, hope he's fit, Rico Lewis and Greaves probably gets a run out. Palmer and um, Palmer, um, Saka, Bruno, Rogers, and Salah. I nearly said Burmo. Sold him last week. Saka is obviously in the team now. And then up front, we've got João Pedro and Cunha. Maybe we've gone a little bit off the boil, maybe. And then um, and Solanke. So that's the front three. Um, we do have a little bit of money in the bank, um, but not a huge amount of money in the bank. Like, can't make drastic changes with this team. We've got no free transfers and 0.6 million in the bank. So with that in mind... What are we looking to do? Well, there's options. Boy, are there options. Um, if you fancy hitting that like button, by the way, guys, it massively helps the algorithm, as I mentioned earlier. And thank you for subscribing as well. Um, let's just talk a little bit about Bruno. I want to show you his average position map from between the posts in the last couple of games because he's played two different roles. But also we need to scout Man United because Nottingham Forest at home, I think, is a good entry point. We saw what Man United did to Everton, right? So let's bring up the average position map of Everton. Bruno played in a front three role. It, he was brilliant. Couple of assists. We also saw big points for Rashford, big points for Xerxes, big points for Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad Diallo is 5 million. He's around 5% owned. He is a brilliant differential pick. I think Diallo is the best differential pick in the game right now and he's barely in any teams. Right wing back, but playing like a winger. He didn't start versus Arsenal, and boy did Man United miss his creativity. He'll come in, of course, his first choice. He's going to come in and start against Forrest. Diallo should be on your radar, but Bruno's position is really key for my team. I need Bruno playing here, where he did against Everton. Because against Man United, let's have a look at that average position map. Bruno played in a central two with Agate. Mainu was suspended, so Bruno came in and played deeper. It's not good for United. It's not good for Bruno. Bruno is not worth this sort of money, eight and a half million, if he's playing in a central two in a 3-4-3 formation. We need Bruno higher up. I believe he'll go there for the Nottingham Forest fixture. If he doesn't, it's cause for concern and he might be a sell for me. Okay, um, so look, we've seen the rest of my team. It's Palmer, Saka, Bruno, Roger Sella and that front three. But let's talk about the front three because I've got a big headache with forwards. Like, as things stand, Solanke... Cunha, João Pedro, something's just not right there for the front three. Like, I am missing a forward I really want. And I don't quite know what forward that is yet, but I look at Kai Havertz, I look at Alexander Isak, I even Nicholas Jackson, like that three I could be very interested in. And with a bit of money in the bank, I can reach most of these guys. Look, Ollie Watkins will be of interest to some because he's got Southampton at home. So I just was on the Scout app and was like, let's just compare Solanke with Havertz and with Isak. Now, sure, you've got to look at Watkins and you've got to look at Jackson, but just interested in Isak in particular. And Isak is outperforming. We can see from this like spider graph, like straight away from chance creation, goal involvement, um, assists, like penalty area touches. The blue line here around the outside pretty much is Isak. And that is him doing better than Solanke and doing better than Kai Havertz. It's been a bit disappointing and Isak is that little bit more expensive, but I do wonder if he's worth it. Jackson's numbers are also really good and really close to Isak's. Watkins, now he's on pens. Do we like him more? Maybe. I don't quite know what the answer is here for me. So I think this week it's very likely Solanke stays in the team, but possibly even gets benched. Yeah, I know. Weird one, isn't it? Like, I'm still on the fence with my decision this week. And I think that means what I really need to be doing is just rolling the transfer. As things stand, I've got Solanke in the 11. Like Solanke probably shouldn't be on the bench, should he? So we've got Cunha benched as things stand. But that could very easily change. Um, it's a big headache. It's a big headache. I want to get to a Trent or maybe a Gomez, or maybe a Timber. I want to replace Solanke, but I don't quite know who with. The best thing to do when you hit that stumbling block, you simply roll the transfer, guys. Like, I don't need to make a transfer with this team. When we see it on screen, and we see Cunha on the bench, you've got a good first sub. There's a chance there'll be some rotation, and he comes in anyway. 
And I'll probably just play with my current squad. Going into game week, game week 16 with two free transfers and money in the bank would give me a little bit more to think about if I go for a trend, is there a budget forward I want to buy? Or do I chase an ESAC and then think about, oh, actually, maybe, maybe downgrade a defender or go for a cheapo? There are plenty of options. So my big decision this week is who to bench. At the moment, it's Cunha attacking subs. And I'm benching, I'm benching Lewis Hall and Mikalenko as well. Um, and then captaincy. We have to discuss captaincy. As always, it's a really big discussion this week. It can't just be set and forget Salah each week. I wish it had been that last week because I said Salah versus Newcastle was going to do damage and I was 60-40 and said on my team selection I'm 60% likely to go with Palmer, 40% Salah. A lot were 90-10. They were always on Palmer. This week maybe is Salah again, but Palmer needs consideration. Spurs are leaky. Palmer is playing really well at the moment. Look, Bruno versus Forrest is an option. As things stand, I'm 50% likely to go Salah. 55% 55% likely to go Salah, okay? I'm probably I'm probably 35% likely to go to go to go Palmer. And then 10% of me just says Bruno's going to play in this advanced role where he played against Everton. Forrest have been will be tired after playing Man City. Once you've played Man City, you knock the ball, you're running loads, you're tired. It's another away trip for Forrest. I just wonder if Man United hit three or four. And if they do, is Bruno a great captaincy option this week? But there's no guarantee he plays there. So I'm 10% Bruno, 35 Palmer, 55 Salah. I think that's where I'm going to go with captaincy. Let me know below where you're going to go. Salah is playing on a different level right now. It has to be said. He is worlds apart with everyone else. His performance in Newcastle was sensational. You expect him to do the same against Everton. Although it's got to be noted, Everton have just kept a clean sheet. And again, Everton at home, Slightly different option, but the way Liverpool are attacking right now, the way Salah's playing, it is hard to see past him. Um, Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with a deadline stream on Saturday. My Sunday streams are awesome. We go through all the data, the pass maps, the visual stuff. Uh, Sunday mornings, come check me out. Uh, But for now, guys, on your way out, please do subscribe if you're not already subbed. Please do like if you're not already hitting that like button. Drop a comment and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.